Um, it seems no like worries. we're live. We're Hi, live. Everybody. Sweet. And uh, yeah. just to confirm, we've got 29 minutes, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. So I'm going to share my screen with everybody and uh, tell them tell them what's up. So here's Chrome. Here's the classic 21st century. Hey, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. Okay, so we have uh, about 29 minutes. I don't see any like room for questions per, or like an audience. Uh, do, are there question periods usually for these? Um, there is, but uh, it's a silent day today. There's not many people. Uh, so you're free to <laughs> have so, as much mm -hmm. of that time as you want. So, Sweet. okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so what I'll, what I'll be doing today is, uh, giving like a brief background on Eden Dow and where we started, what we've accomplished and where we are, and then demo some like 80% complete things that we've got coming up and, 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 uh, show or, or ponder some, you could say, uh, mechanics, uh, crypto mechanics for the future. So to contextualize everything, hi, I'm Cyrus of Eden. Uh, a lot of people know me by cash in a prior life and I've done a bunch of cool stuff, but after uh, making a viral meme app, I asked myself how I might make a historic lasting and meaningful impact. So I followed the question of how we might uh, you know, push the boundaries of humanity's climate journey. So I've uh, been working on the Eden DAO since. Um, and we want to hyperscale the regenerative renaissance. So let me show you all a little bit of um, some of the advisors that we've gotten a chance to speak with as we've been thinking about the space from like uh, carbon removal experts here to some crypto public goods experts on, on the other end. And uh, up, up until this Gitcoin round, we were the number one refi grant. Now we're probably like number five. <laughs> uh, the, I actually decided to sit out of this Gitcoin round because I wanted to focus on building. I think we've gotten, uh, the community has had a lot of faith in us. And um, I spent a lot of time uh, trying to build a team. And to Dow, you know, there were all these people who are interested and in contributing and excited about it. And so I was like, okay, now let's, I guess, like now that there are people coming, we should figure out how to harness this, this energy. But um, over the past six, seven months, we've had people uh, come have like spiritual epiphanies and then leave to go follow their dreams. Um, everybody being like a part-time contributor, but we did manage to uh, raise about a hundred thousand dollars to buy permanent carbon removal tons. These are like the most rock solid way to say we've, uh, we're, we're taking steps towards uh, undoing our effect on the planet. So that was pretty nifty. We like, and so what is like next, what are we working on? Um, what are we trying to do? And I'm not going to go through all this stuff for a second. I'm going to show y'all um, two pages, two different pages that uh, we've got going uh, in, in development. We, I have got going in development. Uh, the first one is a pledge. And why I think a pledge is really important is because it helps set you know, some ground rules around the intention of the DAO, around uh, where people are coming into it from. Um, if somebody does not go through this pledge, then they're not self-selecting to be a member of this DAO. And I really got this uh, inspiration from One Hive. They have a covenant, they have a community covenant. Um, to become a member of One Hive, you have to pledge, you have to accept this pledge and sign something. And I, I thought that was, that was really beautiful. So we have something more um, emotive, you could say, something very soulful, things like uh, recognizing yourself as an expression of Mother Earth instead of separate from it, along with its all its living being systems and rhythms, just like a flower does not sprout out of the meadow, but is the meadow manifesting its nature as a flower. And we have this pledge for people to come click through uh, add their Twitter username and tell us what uh, the world that they'd be proud to leave their children. What would that look like? Or like a regenerative renaissance or um, would be money that would looks like sacred economics, for example. You can click next and sign with Ethereum. This thing comes up and you can tweet it. I should probably tweet this is not the Eden Dow. 
wherever. And you want to tweet it, come through. I have Twitter gold, so it might take a bit to tweet. There we go. And then you can click the verify button. Oh, that's great. Click it again. Right. Um, that's because I put the wrong username. But anyway, you come through. That's what this is what happens. And uh, gets added down here. So what we want this to lead into is now that you've gotten, you know, now that you've uh, soulfully aligned yourself with our movement, then you should be able to mint your membership NFT, your governance NFT. Um, where I've been reading a lot about Vitalik's uh, commentary on token voter governance. And um, that's why I think, you know, having one person, one vote could be an interesting approach. This is a video replay of an actual web app that this isn't just like a mock-up, but uh, it lets you use your webcam to take a picture of yourself and then it'll pixelify it and then add a background to it so that members could be, could join uh, Eden Dow. They, uh, we were thinking of maybe even collaborating with like refi Dow and letting members like choose a different skin or something like that. That could be cool. Um, so that's what this whole thing is. This is our like this is our prototype for for DAO onboarding. You could say if you want to be a member of our DAO, um, you've got to be energetically aligned with us and tell us about the future that you want to create, uh, share it with the world, and then mint your membership uh, NFT so that you can participate in the different things that we are. So this is a uh, this is one of our one of our things, and the second thing I want to show is this page. So the context for this page um, is that, I mean, actually we should be able to keep, figure out the context as we go along, but here, so, so summon carbon rocks out of the ether, right? Join the, join the most ambitious rock solid attempt yet to learn the carbon magic of blocking it away permanently. And Ethereum's proof of work has emitted over 16 million tons of CO2 that will remain in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. As Ethereum transitions to a proof of stake blockchain, let's work towards making the strongest, most rock solid case that Ethereum is climate positive. Let's take concrete steps to settle the score permanently so that there's never any question that Ethereum is climate positive. We've got this, uh, you know, the Ethereum Web3, Ethereum kind of birthed a lot of Web3 for a lot of us. And um, it's transitioning to proof of stake. And do we really want to like, have these skeletons in the closet by uh, buying carbon assets that are, aren't even valid as per the 2030 or 2050 Paris Agreement standards? Or do we want to make sure that the money that we would be spending is going to be rock solid um, and still be a valid you know, claim to climate positivity 30 years down the line or 100 years down the line? And so that's why we want to talk about the vegan Wagyu of carbon assets. Um, you know, there are many different ways to uh, capture carbon and humanity is rapidly developing the magic, quite really, of summoning rocks out of thin air. Uh, and they're turning CO2 into rocks so that it can never go back up again. And it's not the only way, but there's a whole fund that's working on it called Frontier Climate. And Frontier Climate is the wor world's best, like, proactive public goods DAO for this stuff. Um, they they're they have a legendary team they've got like 30 phds uh, the gigabrains from alphabet stripe shopify mckinsey they almost have a billion dollars in deposits and uh, they're stepping in to create a uh, like a pledge an almost one billion dollar pledge for carbon assets the same way that a government would have so back in um, the early 2000s uh, the government came together and created a vaccine there was like a 1.5 billion dollar vaccine pledge from the government of the u.s and that or from multiple countries i think and that created the, that was the the capital that was needed for um drug companies to go and do the research and they were like oh so now that there's a buyer for this stuff we'll go do the research so that we can achieve that and this this is sort of the same thing it's like it's proactive public goods funding. It's, hey, we think this is important. We're going to put in 
uh, frontier in this case, we're going to put $925 million of commitments from blue chip companies and say, hey, this money's here for the next seven years from 2022 to 2030. Let's uh, go and uh, who's going to go and do the permanent carbon removal, the kind of carbon that once you remove it, it's, it never leaves for a thousand years or more, you know, turning carbon into rocks, turning carbon into oil and pumping it up underground. Uh, these sorts of things can really uh, make sure that um, we are making a rock solid case in our climate positivity. So all of this, so this is like contextualizing uh, carbon and Ethereum and Web3 overall. And now we get to this, this B and I'm going to sign out just for sake of this. See, now we see the B and it says, hey, pledge your support to the frontier of humanity's historic quest to master the carbon arts. So you can come connect your wallet. It'll estimate the impact of your wallet. So I've had 220 transactions and this is the number of tons it stored for that many number of years um, of impact, you know, through my Ethereum transactions and other uh, wallets. You could go and connect your other wallet to it, do this. Um, we want to do something like this for DAOs as well, kind of like, uh, you know, Uniswap, for example, what have been their emissions and what are they responsible for and what are their users responsible for? Um, so this is a little estimator utility we built um, using some of the latest science on, you know, what does it mean when you emit, when you emit one ton of CO2? If you think about it on the millennium time scale, it, the, that, that carbon is in the atmosphere for 310 years, just over 310 years. So then we give people the opportunity to participate in this impact pledge, this rock solid impact pledge. So, this is where we get into an interesting uh, notion of carbon bearing assets. So we have uh, in crypto, we all know, we have these uh, interest bearing assets. So y'all might have heard of YV die, or you could even have uh, Ave die. Um, it's not the right Google. You have Ave die, you could have compound die. These are interest bearing tokens. And we even have, for example, Staked ETH, which is contributing to the security of the broader Ethereum network. And all these different um, chains have their own native token that's more often than not proof of stake and has a yield. So this liquid staking version of ETH is an interest bearing token. And what um, the way we're thinking of approaching this is what if you could take your interest bearing token and turn it into a carbon bearing token? So take your SD ETH, wrap it into Eden ETH. You can always unwrap it back to one Steef. Um, but while it's wrapped to Eden ETH, in the meantime, the yield from that Steef is a uh, pledge towards carbon removal. We can use that to buy uh, carbon impact uh, certificates and uh, distribute those to uh, token holders so that they can continuously get, you know, a, an increasing amount of carbon assets. And the ideal is if we can raise like $10 million, which I don't, I'm just one person. I don't know if we can raise $10 million. So we would definitely need the community to like hype this up. Um, but if we can raise $10 million, then we can just go to frontier and be like, Hey, we can give you a bunch of money, come take our money and give us the gold standard of carbon impact. If we, if we don't raise enough money, then we can, buy it ourselves we cannot let the dow you know allocate it and there are many good quality carbon assets uh, out there you don't need to go through frontier we have some relationships already to go through there so here is this like uh carbon bearing you know asset hold hold eden eth and it's a, it's a carbon bearing asset um some of the thoughts we've had around this is like say we some thoughts i've had around this is like um could could it could, could I have it so that you could bridge your steeth your Eden ETH to Cello because that's where a lot of the carbon impact uh, tokens are being minted and will be minted. You could imagine bridging your Eden ETH to Cello and um, it being like the canonical ETH version on Cello, and it could provide like liquidity. Uh, Cello could maybe provide liquidity against Eden ETH using their own token. 
because um, the Eden ETH on mainnet would re reference a Steve, which is, you know, pretty valid. Doesn't have a lot of secondary liquidity nowadays, but that's why there's a 5% discount. Um, but otherwise, pretty, pretty nifty stuff. Um, maybe the, you know, the underlying hypothesis here is can we take like the staking rewards and, and uh, uh, divert those towards carbon impact. So maybe there's like a YV vault, YV die vault later or something like that to um, explore there. So boom, that's uh, these are two of the, the two other things that we're working on. Um, I want to uh, I want to add the NFT stuff to this region pledge and even and even the estimator too. The, the estimate your carbon emissions, which isn't on this page anymore because I hit it. Um, so once somebody joins a DAO, they can like see their carbon emissions, and as they get carbon impact tokens, they technically you know you could count it against your emissions. Um, and uh, then here is this rock solid impact pledge for actually getting those carbon impact certificates. Um, might be worth it just thinking out loud to have somewhere where people can just give their ETH as well and directly give the ETH and it's a donation to this thing. Um, that's a little harder to figure out the business logistics around. So about, that should be um, really it. Uh, happy to go deeper into this, this like carbon tonnier unit um, or has or like this multi-chain stuff um but that's that's really it this is my this is the 18 minute version of eden now uh update you know um we're just building we're not building i'm just building and i'm gonna launch some things and then we're gonna see how the world uh responds to it and we're gonna hype it up and um hope for the best really uh hope for the best because Seems like some nifty stuff, but I'm not sure whether how the broader market and this down and this bear market or whatever is gonna uh, be. I don't know. I don't know how receptive it'll be. So that's the Sorry. that's the test. What's up? So this is incredible. Uh, it has been improved from the last time we talked, and it all looks amazing. I love also the uh, onboarding experience uh, being. Meaningful from the beginning, setting up the, this um, purpose-driven membership, let's say, and not just for whoever wants to join, mm -hmm. or whatever. So I think that that should be also a standard for the community, and it will help. Mm -hmm. I've just tweeted about it. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. And then another thing, I loved also this um, uh, take it if. To be that to be uh, added into Eden DAO, uh, to be used there, I think that's a phenomenal strategy. Um, I have mm -hmm. some stake at ETH, so I will also uh, enter when when it's ready. So the question is, when is this going to be ready? Oh shit! Okay, when is this going to be ready? Yes. Um, at this point, I think uh, NFT NYC is happening right now. My target date for something is like July first. That's my uh, my mom's birthday, actually. So <laughs> I'm gonna try and aim for something for July 1st so that we can all commit our stake teeth. Um, I'm actually curious since since you do have stake teeth, I have stake teeth too. Uh, up until an hour ago, there was another point to this. How does this work part? And I'm, I want to check in with y'all uh, to get your like feel for it. Um, how would your uh, how would your maybe interest change if you knew your staked ETH was locked for uh, locked until 2030? So you couldn't unwrap until 2030. Like, would that add additional hesitation? Um, does that like now make you think really long term? I'm just curious how you, your um, thinking would change if, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to you know, hey, you can wrap your ETH to eat an ETH and go back uh, and whatever. Actually, you can't unwrap it for seven years, for seven eight years. How would yeah. you feel about that? So I, I wouldn't mind if we could have some options. Like uh, I have I have some ETH 
just like unwrapped for using it. Mm -hmm. But then I have some other ETH for for uh, stake. And the one that is staked, I don't plan to sell it never. Mm -hmm. And so so it will apply to this um, thinking of yours. Mm. Like I will I will lock it there without any problem and be happy to to be locked if it's going to help even further, not only to secure the, the chain, but also to uh, be climate positive, then it's a no brainer for me. Um, hmm. So, so for, for, for me, it's good. Um, because I'm also aiming to, to accumulate more ETH in this bear market. Um, mm -hmm. so, so I'm happy that you said that uh, it's, it's going to be ready soon. So I can, I can yeah. use it there and start helping. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. The, the contracts um, are, I wouldn't, the contracts for a lot of the moving pieces are functional and feature complete. I'm still a little, I'm still thinking a little bit of how, what, how about how the interfaces are. Um, but really we got like deployment scripts. I got to hook up the front end to that. Um, and then we could be good to we could be good to go within the next week. So I'm I'm excited for that. Um, oh, as part of this, if this is, this applies broader broadly to other DAOs as well, um, if you are a DAO and you have your token on one chain and you want to launch it on another chain, so that and you want to be able to like bridge it to the other chain, so that maybe there's a tool on the other chain you want to use or whatever, and you don't want it to be a massive headache, you want to just like set this up in an hour. On one on like a Tuesday, um, if that seems very if that seems useful at all, let me know because um, that's something that's something that we want our own tokens to have that ability to do as well. You know, have things on Optimism, on Gnosis Chain, on Celo, and on uh, Ethereum, and so uh, that sort of infrastructure is permissionless and non custodial for other people to use as well. It requires a lot of like custom command sending, right? It'll require some custom command sending because I don't have a, a UI for it yet, but there are some UIs being built. So, um, you know, people could have these tokens, bridge them around and all that sort of jazz. Not, I'm curious as Taoists, if that like, if that's ever been, you know, an issue that y'all have wandered, uh, wanted to overcome. I think it's a very big issue. I don't know if, uh, if there's anybody who has not faced struggles with bridging. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's it's obvious. Oh, okay, yeah. So that it's it's funny you mentioned that because the token um, this isn't the best, most up to date thing right now. But uh, the oh yeah, Omni Protocol is Uniswap for bridges, a permissionless, non custodial token bridge. So that you can have cross-chain data DAO collaborations or multi-chain token apps or omni-chain banknotes. Um, I, I wanted this because, like, I really like I really liked uh, conviction voting, for example, and I also really like um, Colony. And I and then a bunch of our application code has to run on Celo because Toucan's on Celo, and I don't want to run it on Polygon. And I'm like, wow, what, the, what are we gonna do? Like, all these tokens are everywhere. This is gonna be such a hard like engineering problem to detangle and then layer zero came out and they have some really nifty stuff so um really, really nifty stuff sweet that's all that's all it right. for me folks that's all folks <laughs> uh i really like this uh, atmospheric uh impact calculator <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, front end yeah <laughs> it, it is it, it is very good design too like uh, in terms of um uh user interface oh it's amazing thank you which is like something that. that's yeah it is uh i always appreciate good uh design. <laughs> it's what gets people in in the end uh yeah. to actually do stuff with your article it's like oh wow yeah. Hey Cyrus, one last thing. Uh, are you looking for contributors at the moment? Oh, uh, you know, me of like three months ago would have said yes. Uh, me of now says I just want to put my head down and work on this because mm -hmm. uh, I've, you know, true. I, I, unless I am looking for like really open hearted, uh, mission driven, energetic contributors who can just like jump in and do stuff. Um, but otherwise, like, 
uh, contributors, growth, mark community could be interesting. Um, front end developers could be interesting. Uh, front end or full stack like graph developers could be interesting as well. Um, and like a designer or illustrator, illustrator would be really, really interesting. Um, Cause I just ripped a lot of these from Ethereum's own website. So <laughs> a little cheating, um, but yeah, yeah I, th I think contributors would be interesting. Otherwise, like keep your head out and come use this if you think it's cool when we launch uh, and we'll, we'll share it with the world. So uh, yeah, you know, at, at this point, I, I honestly, I got really distracted by contributors over the past six months. So, you know, in the past two months of building, we now have this page, this thing, the carbon bearing vaults and the whole Omni protocol thing. So mm -hmm. I think, I think the, the velocity is pretty good and I want to um, keep it up, keep it up. Yeah. I, I want to focus on that more and then hopefully that translates to uh, usage and, and, and value for people using it rather, rather than yeah. usage specifically. Perfect. Yeah. Looking forward to start using it on the 1st of July. Ah, thanks, Umberto. I'm excited <laughs> to, to launch it too and send it over your way. Sweet, folks. Well, happy MetaFest. Happy MetaFest, Unipuff. Happy MetaFest, <laughs> Umberto. Yes. And Nova, the silent Nova. <laughs> okay. Have a great day, my friend. Um, Thank I hope you all have a day as well. Thank you for hosting me. And I'll all right. see you all next time. Yeah.